what I'm going to focus on here is you guys know how proof by mathematical induction works. Um, you know you have to test your first case. You have to assume your, it's, it's true for a value like k, and then you have to prove, and that's where the lion's share of the work is. So for each of these, a, b, and c, I'm really just going to focus on the proof step, and if you want to ask me about other bits, then that's totally fine, ask me afterwards, okay? So here's my test, here's my assumption, and here's the proof step. So let's just focus on this guy for a minute. This is where all the action happens, okay? Uh, in this case, really, you have to think carefully about index laws, right? Uh, which is often the case when you've got lots of powers and exponents flying around in your inductive hypothesis. So here is what I am trying to prove. In here, this is my k plus 1 I've substituted in. A small number of you had issues when you substituted k plus 1 in, and you didn't get like 3k plus 3. What do you think is a common error instead of, yeah, people would say 3k plus 1, right? Because they're like, oh, it's 3, you put in a k there, and you forget that the k plus 1, the whole thing's being multiplied by 3, okay? Once you know that you've got this line and you set about to prove it, it's fairly straightforward in terms of saying this is the left-hand side. I have a 3 to the 3k in there, and a 2 to the k plus 2, which, why, why do you think I'm looking for these? Why are these important to me? Why do you think I'm trying to separate them out? Have a look at the previous step in your working. It's in the assumption, right? These guys are in the assumption. I'm looking, I'm searching for them somewhere in there. So I pull out a factor of 27 from the 3 cubed, and I pull out a factor of 2 from um, one of these powers that I don't need there. Okay? Once you've done that, you can say, oh, look, now I can group together you know, a few of them, two, that are in the assumption, and then I've got 25 of them left over there. But because I'm trying to prove that it's a multiple of 5, a multiple of 25 is totally okay. It's a multiple of 5, so that guy's sorted, and I just have to deal with this guy. So you can see t in a bit of factorization here. You've got 5 times something. Um, minor note, just to remind you all, how do I know that this is actually a whole number? Yeah, you have to think about it. So earlier on, you introduced k, and you introduced, you might have called it m or n or something like that. You introduced those numbers. When you did, you had to say they weren't just anything. Like if p was like a fraction, like a half, that's not a multiple of 5. Okay, So you had to say something about p. And that's why you sort of remind in your proof, you know, hey, I said that k and p were positive integers. So therefore, if you multiply or raise powers or double, you'll still end up with a whole number. Okay, So this is part... A, right? That was the guts of the proof. Let's have a look at part B. Here's part B. So you go ahead, you do your test in the first case, and it, it works out. You do your assumption. It is a bit awkward to write out because it's quite long. But then your proof, it's really nice because what you've got is a product that goes, you know, all of the terms there. Your proof step includes everything in your assumption, which makes your assumption very easy to use. Plus this extra guy here, you see that? That's the k plus one-th um, component there. And over here on the right-hand side, this is what happens when I put k plus one into all these spots. Again, common error to make. Instead of saying 2k plus two, what do you think people write? 2k plus one, and then it doesn't work out. You're like, why isn't this happening, okay? So there's my proof step. I use my left-hand side, and immediately, ooh, that was a bit naughty. I left off an important piece of working. Immediately, you can use your assumption. You don't need to twist and turn this statement at all. The assumption is just sitting there, so you use it. You make your substitution. And then you just have to kind of algebra your way through it. Okay? So you combine your fractions, you simplify, and there you go. Why do you have to say by assumption? Ah, okay, great qu question. <laughs> Why did I hurriedly put it in, okay? The whole idea of mathematical induction is that Unlike in every other area of maths where we kind of say, don't assume anything, <laughs> right? Um, only use the information they've supplied to you. What you're doing is you, your second step is to assume that something is true, and on the basis of that, see if you can then construct a proof on that foundation, okay? <laughs> but then you can say, hey, um, early on, this is like a version of the assumption, the very first value. And it means that if it works for the first value, I can say it works for... The next one, the k plus one, and then the k plus one after that, etc. So that's why the assumption is important. Okay, um, and then it is, like I said, just algebra from there, and you can inspect it yourself later on. Uh, it does simplify out. Okay. Last proof by mathematical induction on this page. The inequalities do tend to be the ones that give us the most grief because you have to be a little more creative with these. Um, but you can see there's a few ways to do this, right? Um, here's the way I've chosen to do it. Here's my assumption. I've just popped k in. 
Here's what I'm trying to prove, my k plus 1 case. So you can see there's k plus 1 in the power, there's k plus 1 being multiplied by 3, um, which looks like this. Now, how many of you, I can't remember because I had a look but I can't remember now. Um, how many of you went from here and considered this guy? How many of you did that? Anyone? Okay, yeah, cool. So you can, you can work with this guy, that's fine. We're quite good at proving that things are positive because, for instance, if you have a look at this guy, see that's, that's got to be positive. It's an exponential, it's growing, it's never going to drop down, no stationary points, anything like that. And then you can make your argument over here. That was one way to prove it and that was totally fine. Um, I decided not to do that. I just started off with the assumption step and then I tried to twist and turn that so it looked like the proof step, the k plus 1 step. So this is this. Um, what can you see I did from this line to this line? What did I do to both sides? I multiplied by 2, and the reason why is because in my proof, the thing I'm trying to prove, there's a 2 to the k plus 1 on the left hand side. So I put it there as well. Okay. Um, you have to be a little bit cautious in here. Can you see what's happening? This is what I want to be bigger than. What I end up getting is even bigger than that. So you can say, well, the thing I've got is bigger than what you need, and so therefore I'm bigger than that too. So you can see my string of inequalities here, right? If you want to be bigger than this, and you're even bigger than that, then that's totally fine. You want to prove you're bigger than 5, and your proof says, oh, I'm bigger than 10, then that's good. You are bigger than 5 as well. Okay.